Depends on the age. In a toddler classroom, uh, conflicts are a part of toddler life and learning to get through them is, is a developmental stage. And the same within early childhood, all the way through. I, I really see the school experience as a safe microcosm of society. This is where we learn how to relate to human beings. I've been noticing that uh, people haven't been wiping the RFMs off. I would like them to check twice. Um, I picked uh, you get what you gave. And my logo is uh, two boomerangs, one with good and one with bad, showing that whatever you throw out there comes back. So it's not a place where we avoid conflict because it's going to happen. I had a parent once who asked, um, can you make a, uh, what was it, an aggression-free zone? Make this an aggression-free zone. They had heard that in some other setting. I said, you know, to declare something like that is setting children up for failure. And really what we want to help them to know is that this is a space where they are safe. And if something is happening that they don't like, if something, someone is doing something that they don't like, or if they are doing something inappropriate, there is always a responsible adult nearby who can help. There are also their peers nearby who will call them on it. Well, I probably got from three times three, because I have several three times threes. The older they get, the more important that is, is helping children to know that they themselves are responsible within the context of the peer group to keep each other going in the right path. And if someone is doing something inappropriate, let's do something about it. Let's not ignore it. Let's not walk away from it, um, especially if they're doing something to somebody else. This is an opportunity for learning and growth rather than punishment and uh, expulsion. Uh, here, it's, it's, our emphasis isn't on what is the punishment for it, it's really how are we as a community impacted by it and how are we going to help this child to address it. Um, so on the classroom level, it's using appropriate language for the age group that you're working with. It's finding appropriate recourses for the age groups that you're working with. The older the children get, the more cognitive the discussion becomes, the more self-aware they become. Is it acknowledgments? Um, I'd like to acknowledge JL on the other side, because in choir today, we were dancing during one song. We were having a lot of fun. So helping them to really feel the feelings of the other person, helping them to understand the perspective that other people have a different perspective and that they aren't able to control that person's perspective. I think that's a, a, a great lesson that happens usually at the end of three to six early on in elementary. Those are our healthy lifelong lessons and this is a safe space to learn them. How do you handle it when someone else has lost control of themselves? Here, it's not an aggression-free zone. Aggression happens, anger happens, frustration happens, sadness happens. These are all human emotions that, that happen in the course of life. It's more helping the person who's feeling it learn how to self-calm, learn how to self-soothe, learn how to, to relate themselves, and help the others around them learn how to appropriately respond. Um, so I, I see the little tiffs that happen in a toddler classroom through a three to six classroom, through that early childhood experience where they're learning how to verbalize now their, their disagreements and they're struggling through the, the mediation process. How do I help make it right? You know, the, the, the child who wants to tell on everybody else because they're doing something wrong and then what do I do when I've done something wrong? Uh, and then into elementary, when it's, you really start wrangling with these more higher level moral and ethical questions um, with the children, helping them to, to come to a common solution. Uh, it's, a, it's a great, healthy process when the adults dive into it with the children in an age-appropriate way. Um, and for, for, for parents, I feel their concern is so often it has to be focused on their child and on their child's reaction. And as an administrator, I see my role 
really as a support to the parent who's processing it themselves and going through their own personal history and their own dreams and visions for their children and their own protective nature for the child. It's a completely understandable thing to want to protect your child. But how do we, instead of thinking of it as a protection, how do we now help think about empowering our children and helping them to learn how to relate in these difficult situations so that we're setting that thinking path up for success all the way through life, not just in this one moment, in this one situation, but really what's the best way for this child to, to think about it for the lifelong success.